Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. This is my first video of 2020 and I'm hoping this year to upgrade my channel a bit and make a lot more videos on costume and seeing as we're in quarantine right now I should have more time on my hands to do so and supply you with some much needed entertainment. This series will be on how I put together my pink 1860s ball gown inspired by the one that Meg March wears in the recent Little Women movie. As soon as I saw this in the behind the scenes pictures I knew I needed it and I'm excited to share my process with you all. In this video I will be talking about how I did my research for this costume and a bit of information on 19th century clothing, its construction, what materials I'm using and how I drape my bodice pattern. Little Women is set in the later Victorian and I believe it is the 1860s. This is important to the construction and appearance of the dress. So what does creating a 19th century bodice entail? Well bodices in this time period were of course boned and well structured which is very important. Not only did the corsets have boning but so did the bodices. Now this is just a costume so it isn't an exact replica of the one worn in the movie or one that would have been worn in this time period. I am making a more simplified version in hopes that those of you at home who are new to sewing or new to historical costuming will be able to follow along. There are a few features in the Victorian bodice that are quite interesting when compared to today's fashion, such as the shoulder seam was often dropped back or forward a few centimetres, so a shoulder seam never really sat on the shoulder. The side seam would also be dropped back a little bit too, and I actually like this feature quite a lot. The back of the bodice would have a curve on the second to last panel. A Victorian ball gown would often feature a bertha, which is a collar that would cover the low neckline of the dress, and accentuated the woman's shoulders. This would often feature pretty lace trims or fabrics, ornate embellishments, jewels or other design features. Now let's talk about my Meg bodice. As I said, this is going to be a bit more of a simplified basic version, but I am still following the time period construction details. I've chosen to drape my bodice mock-up instead of creating and adapting a block pattern, as this method is easier to follow and do yourself if you're not familiar with pattern drafting which most people aren't. Now I'll dive into the actual video of me creating my bodice and I hope you all enjoy. So this book here is what I'm using for research and I was flipping through it and found this and this is almost identical to what I was looking for. The one I'm looking at in Little Women is an 1860s dress if I remember rightly, I could be wrong. This one is from, they believe to be the 1840s and it is oh, basically identical to what I'm looking to achieve also excuse these nails this one yeah ignore that <laughs> i don't want any sleeves i want a square neckline i really recommend this book if you are into period clothing especially victorian or civil war era because look how beautiful these are look at these remind me of cassette from the miz i need this one in my life i'm already making a pink dress i don't need another in the back they have a glossary of all of the terms used, so that's really helpful to just get this book guys, it's really great. So I've probably done a bit on how to do a 19th century bodice, so this can kind of be ignored, but this is how I'm applying it to Meg in her dress. So I found these brilliant images deep online of the actual dress and they were so helpful. But you can see this front section here, this would be cut on the fold. There's a side piece here, and then this would be this side here. So the armhole seam, as I like to call it, which would be the side seam, would usually come around here. But in a 19th century bodice, they are dropped back, so it's a couple of centimetres behind. And then the back seam would be curved like this, and then there's another seam here. So in total, we have one, two, three or five pieces and this I'm going to be including in the bodice not a separate add-on piece so technically six seven because of the back but that's only one continuous thing or which will basically be cut here on the fold so that's where I'm at in my headspace for this design right now before I start draping I'd just like to say that I have a bit of a list because I've recently had major dental surgery and I'm getting dental implants so these are on dentures <laughs> so, so they're quite hard to talk with but I'm trying my best. Hopefully by the time I do a voiceover I won't have any problems. <laughs> so when I'm doing a draped mock-up I use a lot of scrap 
calico that I don't use for other mock-ups or other university projects because I study costume, which means a lot of material that I can use scraps of that I don't have to pay for, which is great. <laughs> so this, because I'm quite small, I can use kind of squares like this and find a way to draw on them without a seam allowance, but anyway, just use the scraps, guys. It doesn't even have to match, just, it's just a mock-up. <laughs> So I am going to sign off on this video by showing you guys my materials and look how pretty and pink these all are. I'm so excited to use them. A lot of things I already have when I'm using scraps of, such as the bodice interfacing, the boning, the closures, blah blah blah. But the main materials and decorative things I had to order in. But I am trying to limit what I order. But anyway, I'll show you what I have and what I'm using them for. So first is this gorgeous pink taffeta. I think it's a pink silk taffeta, but it was on sale and it's gorgeous. I think there's five meters of it there, which I'm hoping might be enough. I think it'll be enough for the skirt. I might have to order another half a meter for the bodice. I am going to get into how you gauge how much materials you need, maybe in the next video, I'm not sure. But with this five meters I'll be using Four and a half for the skirt, one half for the bodice. Then this is the bodice lining, which is just a pale pink poly cotton. You would need another fabric for the middle layer of the bodice, which I like to call the strength layer. You would basically need a stronger cotton or cotton-like fabric. I often use cotton drill or calico, I think I'll be using calico, or if I can find some scrap drill I'll use that. But uh, this is my lining fabric. In this year I had in my sewing kit and it's for the sash on the waist. But this is for the bertha. Look how pretty. It's also pink and lovely. <laughs> I think I might get, if I don't have any here as scrap, I think I might get a white thin lace trim that's kind of like half of what this is, so just there. Um, if I feel like it's not elaborate enough. <laughs> but. I'm gonna wait and see, but these are my materials.